At his 20th day in office, President Biden has submitted 389 nominations that require Senate confirmation. That still leaves a number of important positions, including director for the Office of Management and Budget, vacant. Max Steyer is president and CEO of the Partnership for Public Service. Max, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me here. So your organization has been tracking nominations and confirmations. President Biden's 200th day in office was on Monday. How's he doing with respect to filling those positions? So the answer is that uh, relative to past presidents, he's pretty much on par. Uh, certainly on the nomination side, he is uh, in the same ballpark as prior presidents have been ahead of uh, uh, former President Trump, but um, in the same ballpark as uh, Presidents Obama and Bush. Um, but when it comes to confirmation, uh, there are fewer of those that he has. Um, and that's what is comparing to, to the near past. The reality is comparing to what has to be done. Um, you know, President Bush has a very, very long ways to go, as has all other presidents at this stage in their administration, because we have a system that is frankly just not working. Well, Max, what's the holdup? Is the problem on the Senate side or the administration side? So the answer is it's ultimately all the above. Uh, the reality is you have 1,200 uh, Senate confirmed positions and the Senate is really too small of a pipe to be able to manage uh, all that throughput. And as I indicated earlier, um, no modern president has actually had their team on the field um, when the game started. Uh, it's really very, very uh, concerning in a world in which there's so many different threats um, that it takes so long, no matter how hard you work at it, to actually get your team and, uh, on the field um, at, at, the, at the moment in which the game begins on January 20th. So, um, you know, you think about it, uh, presidents have typically taken well over a year to get their core leadership team in place. And you see um, in prior administrations, you know, upwards of uh, almost, you know, 40% of the full Senate conf uh, confirmed positions, not even seeing nominees for two years. It it's, a, it's a broken system that there's really not enough attention being paid to. Well, I want to ask you about the system and your recommendations for it. But before, can you give us some examples of key positions that still need nominees? Well, you, you led off, I think, with probably the most prominent example of that is the you know, director of the Office of Management and Budget. You know, OMB is the nerve center of our government. We have very, very little in the way of central enterprise function in our government. OMB is it. It's the main, main place to be. And we don't still have an OMB director. You know, obviously, there are other positions like the uh, commissioner of the FDA in today's world, which are obviously vital. But <clears throat> the reality is that all of these jobs are very important and we are missing uh, many of them. We really have just a, a small number that you actually have confirmed leadership in place and none of us should find that acceptable. And, and tons of uh, ambassadorships as well. Max, how do these vacancies impact agency missions and the workforce? Well, to be very clear, like the workforce is mission committed and they're doing their very best. And the people who are in the acting roles, um, they are typically extremely capable individuals. For me, the metaphor is the substitute teacher. We've all had substitute teachers in our lives and they could be amazing educators. The challenge though, is that um, they know that they're there day to day. They're not gonna take on the long-term problems. Um, they're not gonna take on the big problems. And just to you know, be very frank about it, they get no respect. Uh, and so that's a little bit of what we have right now many, many people who are trying their best, who may be very, very capable, but they're positionally limited in what they can do because they're in an acting role. And what that fundamentally means is that the big challenging problems don't get addressed in the way that they need to. And you see it in all corners of our government. You mentioned ambassadors. Certainly that's true with respect to foreign policy. You hear lots of other countries talking about not having the right counterparties to deal with. They're gonna be less willing to invest in relationships with people that they don't see as long-term leaders. Uh, and that's true domestically as well, whether it's the COVID response, the economic revitalization we need, the uh, climate issues, the racial equity issues. I mean, we have a host of problems. We need the very best from our government, and then we need the best leaders who are in place in order to be able to deal with all those problems. So Max, let's talk about your recommendations then. You talked about the system is broken. 
how can the political appointment system be better streamlined and reformed? So uh, again, the response is pretty, pretty easy in terms of what you, you need to do conceptually. Uh, and that is reduce the number of Senate confirmed positions. You have 1,200 of them, that's way too many. Um, we saw actually an important effort in 2011 uh, to reduce the number of Senate confirmed positions. And they actually, the Congress did that, reduced by about 160 some odd positions. I would describe that as a slice of bread, not, not, not the loaf or half a loaf. Um, and we need to do it again, but we need to do it in a, in a much more aggressive manner. And I think that uh, we've issued a report that lays out an approach that makes sense. Certainly, um, you know, we believe that many of those positions could be career positions. An example of that would be, you know, what's going on at the Department of Energy, where uh, the leadership for their cyber position for ensuring safety in our energy infrastructure, the secretary there wants to make sure that is a career position. When you need continuity of attention, when you have management positions, you should have career leadership. Um, it's quite interesting to look at positions like uh, CIOs or um, you know the heads of legislative affairs or public affairs. There's a lot of variety across the government as to whether or not they're Senate confirmed or not. In our view, none of them have to be Senate confirmed. Uh, so one answer would be convert some of them to career positions, some to political non-Senate confirmed positions, especially where they have uh, um, leaders of them that are actually Senate confirmed. Um, many of these positions are part-time boards. Uh, they could actually be brought into individual agencies appointed by the secretary as opposed to by the president. Um, but we lay all this out. I mean, the reality is we should be able to cut more than half of those positions. And I can't resist saying we need fewer Senate confirmed positions. We also need fewer overall political positions. We have 4,000 of those, and that also creates its own set of issues. All right, Maxwell, we'll continue to watch those appointments and confirmations as they move through the system. Thanks so much for being on the program. Thank you so much for having me.